Uh, so today we're going to talk about the 80,000, 87,000 new IRS agents that are being hired uh, as part of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. It's a funny name, but the Inflation Reduction Act, given that it increases inflation. You, you know, it's like uh, OL's 1984. It, reduction means the exact opposite of what it's supposed to mean. Um, but uh, as a consequence of the Inflation Reduction a a Act, there is a lot of kind of hysteria. There's a lot of panic. Uh, there's a lot of angst around this idea that the IRS is not going to have 87,000 new IRS agents and they're coming down on us and we should barricade our doors and get our guns because they're coming at us with guns, you know, and on and on and on. There's a lot of panic out there uh, from um, uh, journalists, politicians, Twitter, the media and everything like that. So we'll talk about it, try to bring some objectivity to this number uh, that has to do with uh, IRS agents. And then uh, the IRS story is, um, you know, I think I, I talked about it a little bit when I talked about the Inflation Reduction Act. Part of the Inflation Reduction Act is $80 billion, $80 billion with a B dollars to the IRS. And um, many, uh, many conservatives, many people on the right have, uh, have, have plucked out the number of 87,000 new IRS employees are going to be hired. Um, and that this is going to be massive, uh, massive uh, new audits on Americans, massive intrusion on us. This is doubling the size, more than doubling the size of the IRS in terms of people. And, and, and this is just, it's coming, right? And expect, you know, start worrying. You should start really thinking about this. You might get audited next year. This is imminent. This is, so I want to calm you down because while I hate the idea, hate the idea, despise the idea, that the IRS is getting one dollar more. I mean, I'd like to see the IRS shrinking, not expanding. And while I hate the idea that the IRS hires anybody, it's not as bad as it's being made, made out to be. Um, don't panic. The world is not going to come to an end. So let's, let's start with the fact that, um, one, the $80 billion that the IRS is going to get is spread over 10 years. So this is dollars going into the IRS in chunks over 10 years. So it's not that it gets it tomorrow and it's not that it can go out and hire people tomorrow. Even if it got the money tomorrow, even if it tried to hire 80,000 people tomorrow, where are they going to find them? There are not 80,000 people waiting there just to get IRS jobs. Indeed, right now there's a shortage of CPAs there's a shortage of accountants. Uh, the the uh, private accounting firms are paying huge salaries to attract new graduates out of uh, out of college. The IRS can't afford people. Uh, part of the part of uh, the reason they're getting this money is it, we'll get to it. They can't hire people because they can't pay them enough. Uh, so they're going to have to boost wages. Um, and and who wants to work for the IRS? Uh, most of the good people are going to go to work for your accountants. Uh, one of the reasons not to worry about the, the, the more hires in the IRS is the people they hire are pretty incompetent. They don't know anything. They're not very good at auditing. Uh, so I, I just I just wouldn't worry even if they were. But they can't hire 80,000 people tomorrow. There's no way. Even if they were going to hire 80,000 and they're not, it would take them 10 years to hire them. They're only getting the money over 10 years. And it would take them, I mean, even hiring 8,000 people a year for the IRS I mean, remember, IRS is a government bureaucracy. It would take them forever to do that. Think of just all the kind of affirmative action stuff they would have to go through. It, it, it's, it's just, there's just no employees out there to do it. Now, add to that the fact that they're not actually hiring 80,000 people to go and audit you. They're not even hiring 80,000. The number's probably closer to 60,000. But why are they hiring 60,000? It's not 60,000 in addition to what they have today. It turns out that half of the people working for the IRS today, and I think that number is about 80,000 ex existing people working at the IRS today in all kinds of jobs. Half of the people working for the IRS today are about to retire. So over the next 10 years, half of the employees at the IRS are going to retire. So a big chunk of these new employees are just replacing existing employees. 
just replacing existing employees. So another reason not to work. Um, additionally, the people that the IRS is likely to hire, are they going to hire some auditors, possibly to replace the people who are retiring and to increase the number of auditors that they have? But a lot of the people they're going to hire have nothing to do with auditing. They have to do with uh, IT. Uh, the IRS has primitive computer systems, thanks God, uh, you know, which is good, right? Uh, so they're slow, they're inefficient. Um, they're going to hire IT people. Uh, they're going to hire programmers. They want to improve their IT infrastructure and they want to improve customer service. Do you know that 90% of all telephone calls, 90, 90, I think it's actually 89, so maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. 89% of all phone calls into the IRS are not answered, <laughs> just not answered. And I was talking to an accountant, when was it? A couple of days ago, having dinner, and, uh, one, of, uh, one of the guys there was an accountant, a, a tax accountant, and he says, he often calls the IRS and gets somebody on the phone and asks a complex question. A real complex way. He's really asking a question for, for a client, right? Asking a question. And the guy goes, um, um, let, let, let me see. Let me ask. And hangs up. <laughs> and they hang up because they don't know the answer because <laughs> they're not sophisticated. So the idea is the IRS wants to improve customer service, which is to get more people on the phone to hang up on you when they can't answer the question. Uh, so... Uh, they'll be having a lot of IT people. I think, if you think about the $80 billion that are going, um, who's, who's going to get this money? Who's going to benefit from this? Well, some people will be hired, so they're going to get some people hired. But most of the money is going to go to contractors. Most of the money is going to go to government contractors. It's going to go to people who, you know, DC is booming. DC always is booming. There's, oh, I, I was in DC in the summer. Construction everywhere, building everywhere, new condos, new office buildings, everything booming. Northern Virginia is booming. Maryland is booming. Anybody associated with government is booming. Why? Because they always are spending more money. There's always bigger budgets and they're always allocating that to contractors who live in the DC, work in DC, because that's, that's where, the way they, they provide services. Most of this is gonna go to outside contractors, outside people. I mean, it's corrupt, it's insane. They're gonna charge them, what is it, $50,000 for a hammer or a toilet or whatever. Typical government rates, government fees. They're gonna, you know, and, but this is not gonna go directly to the bottom line to auditors to go after you. So while it's never good that the government's spending more money, and it's never good that that money is spent on the IRS, and it's not good that they improve their computer systems and they get faster and more efficient. I'm not too worried, partially because how much faster in 10 years, over 10 years, how inefficient is this gonna be? How good of a program is they gonna get? It's just not gonna happen like that. It's not gonna happen quickly and it's not, in, I don't think, gonna be particularly devastating. Um, so, I say it's horrible, complain about it, bitch about it, do everything, but don't panic and don't be afraid. And, and this is generally my advice, right, on most political things. But, but I find that every time there's something in the news, everybody flips out and goes crazy and this is the end of the world. And, 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 and including, you know, the Republicans who have every incentive to say this about the Biden administration and to let you know, uh, uh, how terrible this is and how awful this is. And, and again, this is the end of the world. It's not, it's just not, it's, everything's going to be okay. So, um, you know, it's just one more government boondoggle, one more government disaster. But um, in terms of actual net increases to IRS employment, yeah. But it's, it's nowhere near the numbers that some people uh, are putting out there. It, it, the IRS is going to get bigger, which means, in my view, more bureaucratic. The IRS uh, will have a lot of investment in computers and software and stuff like that, which will take forever and be inefficient. But overall, is the IRS going to get more sophisticated? Probably not. Is the IRS going to get more efficient? Probably not. 
And so I was going to have massive new resources to go after you, me, probably not. Maybe at the margin, but probably not. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.